Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to go over my top seven eyeshadow palettes from 2017. Now 2017 I see as the year when I really kind of expanded my makeup collection. I got to experiment with a lot of new brands, a lot of new formulas, and I feel like my makeup game really stepped up in 2017, especially when it comes to eyeshadow. I consider eyeshadow my absolute favorite part of makeup and I definitely own more eyeshadow palettes than anyone could, you know, ever actually use. But I do love eyeshadow. I, of course, wear it every day. And now that I'm in a place where I can actually have a little bit of, you know, extra money to spend on makeup, eyeshadow palettes are where I'm seeing most of that go. And it is very exciting. And 2017 was a year full of awesome eyeshadow releases. So I'm just going to go through my list of my top seven. I'm going to start at number seven and then work back to number one. At number seven, I put the ColourPop You Had Me at Hello palette. This is their first palette to come with a mirror. Now, 2017 was the beginning of all ColourPop actual palettes, and they are all gorgeous. I do believe, though, that the You Had Me at Hello palette really brought out the best in both their mattes and their shimmers for these dark warm colors but you also get some nice pop of cool colors in here as well. I do rearrange all my color pop palettes because I don't like the way they come for the most part. You'll see one later on in this list. Um, I just pop them out real quick. I use either like a bobby pin or, or I have um, like a little cuticle tool. I just pop it in, pop out the pans and then I kind of rearrange them in a way that's more inspiring to me. So I'm not a huge fan of the way they just kind of like, it looks like they just throw the colors in there and when it's all jumbled up like that I can't really pick out the colors that I want to use and really create a look out of it. So I would rather much pop them out, put them, um, not like complete color order but in an order that makes more sense to me. But I do feel like ColourPop really began stepping up their game with these palettes and this one in particular is one of my favorites from this past year. At number six is a palette from this summer. It's the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. Now when I first saw this palette online, I like gasped and I knew like I had to get it. This is the first palette I ever got that was completely warm tones. I always shied away from like the reds and like the dark burgundies because I was under the impression that it would always make me look tired um, and look like my eyes were more red. And this really made me step out of my comfort zone and try a lot more warm looks. The shades are absolutely beautiful. You can use these light toned, more neutral ones for every day. You do get kind of the same look every time you use this, but it's a look that I absolutely adore and I consider this one of the best naked palettes. Next on the list is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. Now, I'm not a huge fan of, for the most part, giant eyeshadow palettes just because I don't really know like where to go. They're a bit bulky, they're a bit harder to use, harder to travel with, but these shades are absolutely gorgeous and the blendability is spectacular. They practically blend themselves. My only gripe is that with a few of these like darker shades, they are very similar. So she definitely could have like cut out this entire like corner and put in something else. But when it comes to the shades up here, these lighter transition-y shades, and then these shimmers right here, it's just gorgeous. I love absolutely every look that I come up with with this palette. Um, I did steal the idea from Raw Booty, Cures Booty, Raw Booty from Raw Beauty Christie, who put the card right there. I was gonna tape it to the back, but then I saw her do that and I was like, that's a lot better. I do have the one, um, I guess the old packaging, um, so it is get, it does get pretty dirty. Um, I can wipe off most of it, but you know, it's not a huge, it's not like a deal breaker for me, to be honest. Next on the list is one that's a bit controversial. It is the Anastasia Subculture Palette. I absolutely love this palette. The colors in here, they speak to me. I love these colors. I love this green. I love this orange. I love electric, that duochrome right there. Cube is the only dud for me in this palette. I already hit hard pan 
on cube I can't really use it. it doesn't really look good on anything but absolutely everything else in this palette I absolutely adore now you do have to use these shades a little different than you would with other eyeshadow palettes again they are pressed pigments and not actual eyeshadows and you can only really use like two I would use max three shadows from this palette at any one time because it can get very muddy very dark and you don't wanna I'm trying to say you don't wanna um blend too hard with these you want to go in a really light hand a little bit of product even if you go in with a little bit of product but you blend really hard it is going to get patchy and it is going to look bad um, especially this green color right here you have to go in with a light brush and a light hand getting to the top three number three on this list is a newer addition and since it is newer i didn't want to go ahead and put it in the one or two spot but it could definitely take that at some point it is the bh cosmetics zodiac palette i have to actually stop myself from using this palette every day because i love it so much it is gorgeous it has every color not every color but it has the majority of colors that you could ever want and these baked shadows are amazing now just watch this and i just touched it i just touched it and then they are absolutely gorgeous now i did have another bh cosmetics palette that had some of their baked eyeshadows they definitely changed the formula because in that one you did not get the same pigmentation they were definitely not the same formula but here, every single one of these baked shadows is gorgeous. I find myself using the baked shadows more than the mattes, even though the mattes are pretty nice. They're not the best mattes I've ever used, but for what I pay, $16 for this palette, the mattes are, they're blendable, they're definitely easy to work with, it's not bad by any means. The only part of this palette that I don't really like is the highlighter in the center. It is a very pretty color. I tend to use it just for the inner corners of my eyes and I'll never run out of it because it's huge. I did try using it as a highlight on my face but it doesn't really blend out. It just kind of leaves like a stripe on your face. So if you wanted to go in with like a light like duo fiber brush and kind of work it in that could work but don't go in with like a tapered highlighting brush or anything dense because it's not going to blend out once it's on the skin. My favorite colors here are Capricorn. Of course I'm a Capricorn but um, what's this one? Aquarius is gorgeous. This green right here for Sagittarius was perfect for um, Christmas. I wore this all over my lid on top, blended out the crease with the Capricorn matte. And then I went underneath my um, lower lash line with the Scorpio Red. It was gorgeous. And again, unless I had forced myself to like stop using this and use other eyeshadow palettes, I would still be using this just about every day. Number two on the list is my most expensive eyeshadow palette to date. It is the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. Now this was something that I had been wanting for months and months and months. It first came out, I want to say earlier this year, I'm not exactly sure which month, um, and then it sold out and originally it was a um, limited edition and then they changed that and said it would come back in stock in November and I told myself, okay, if you really want this eyeshadow palette and you still want it by November, you'll go ahead and get it. So I waited, it came back in stock in November and I still wanted it and I said, you know what, hold off until the VIB sale where you can get 20% off and if you still want it there, go ahead and grab it. The sale came, I still wanted the palette, the palette was finally back in stock, so I grabbed it. The shades are beautiful. It's not exactly the most life-changing eyeshadow palette in the world, but this is the one that started the whole warm tone craze in eyeshadows, and I had never tried Natasha Denona before, so I am happy that I got to try her formula. I'm not a huge fan of her like the shimmers, to be honest. Her mattes are beautiful. They do take some building up, which I'm surprised. I thought that I would just get like nice blendable full pigmentation, but no, they go on really light. You have to really work them in and build them up, but they do blend like a dream. The only thing that I really don't like about this palette is this light shade right here. It, it Honestly, it looks horrible on the eyes. It's really messy and like it, like the palette would be fine without it like just look at it but other than that 
I am happy that I was able to get a Natasha Denona palette and try out the formula and these are shades that I do love and use fairly often so I know I am going to get a lot of use out of this palette. That being said, my all-time favorite eyeshadow palette from 2017 was the ColourPop Yes Please palette. This is everything that I was expecting from the Natasha Denona one at a fraction of the price and, and it doesn't have the shade in there that I really don't like. Now I did pop out the pans and rearrange them in a way that I felt was more inspiring. I have all the shimmers on the bottom, I have all the mattes in these first two rows. I might pop these out again and just rearrange them. I saw someone else do this on, um, on Reddit and they had a really nice layout to it so I might do that again. But these shades are absolutely gorgeous. This yellow is really pigmented blends like a dream. These are perfect like for setting your eye, for blending out a little bit of your crease. This red and this orange, gorgeous. And then the shimmers are some of the best ColourPop shimmers that I have ever used. Now this takes the number one spot over the Natasha Denona just because of the price. This was only $16. This is $130. So I will say this actually made me a little disappointed in the Natasha Denona because I was expecting it to be so much more, but honestly it's not much better. Like I wouldn't take back my Natasha Denona because I wanted to try the formula, I really wanted to try the brand, and I wanted to get a palette that I knew I was going to use. Her other palettes, like the bigger star palettes, they're more expensive and they're colors that I wouldn't really use. So I don't regret getting it for that purpose. But knowing now that the ColourPop one is just as good, just as blendable, just as pigmented, I'm not sure I would have gone back and like bought it again. It did take me a little bit to actually get this palette. I think I got it on the third restock. I had to set like an alarm for the restock time and actually buy it on my lunch hour at work, but it was 100% worth it. So thank you for joining me for this top seven of 2017 eyeshadow palettes. I hope if you like my videos, you like my content, you'll go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and so blah, blah, blah. I hope if you like this video, you'll go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like my content or would like to stick around, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thank you again and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye!